Hello parents and new 6th grade students. I want to welcome you all to the 6th grade accelerated math program at Gulf Shores Middle School. This is a huge change for you parents. I'm sure the concept of kids going to middle school was as scary as can be. I know, been there. We're going to make it as easy as we possibly can here. I want to spend a little bit of time going over how things are going to work and what a normal day is going to look like in my math class so that you will all know what's going on and feel a little bit more comfortable maybe take a little stress off your plate now the first thing I want to do is talk about the calendar in canvas canvas is the learning system that we use for everything if you were in the Gulf Shores City School system last year you know what I'm talking about and you should be fairly familiar with it already the calendar is going to be your best friend because every single day on the calendar you can see here I'm going to put exactly what we're going to be doing on those days and that's going to help you stay on top of things if you're even if you're at home sick now the month view gives you a nice overview but it can get kind of overwhelming but up here on the top right you got some options you can do the week view which is absolutely useless don't use the week view or you can use the agenda and I really like the agenda because the agenda shows exactly what you have coming up each and every day and that helps you to take and go through your checklist and make sure all your boxes are checked and that you got everything done now the um let's see where are we at here calendar canvas notes package all right so what are we going to be doing in sixth grade accelerated math this year we're going to be using a curriculum called a plus college ready which is designed to really get the kids thinking and to give them a deeper understanding of how math works there's going to be a lot of investigations going on in this and investigations is a type of math where the kids take and work through a process in order to get that aha moment about why the numbers work the way they do but fear not you old school folks there's going to be plenty of pencil on paper we're going to do this year as well to help them hammer in those basic facts that they're going to need now um the assignment pages are going to end up looking something like this this is going to be i think our very first page that we're going to do in accelerated math and you can see that there's questions and the kids go through and answer different questions there's going to be a lot of hands-on stuff we're going to be doing we're going to be making stuff we're going to be using manipulatives a lot of hands-on learning for sixth grade seventh and eighth grade totally different seventh and eighth grade is going to be a lot more of a traditional instruction approach where it's going to be um more notes more more work more mathematics algebraic type problems but as far as a sixth grade goes this is our last chance to get that solid foundation we need on those basic skills before we throw them into that fiery pit of algebra which is coming but it's not that hot trust me i've been doing it for a long time so where are we at next um, videos if you have had a seventh or eighth grader with me before you know that I have videos online for those classes that shows every day what we're, we did in class sixth grade is going to be a little different because of the a plus college ready I'm still kind of filling it out it's the first time I've done this program so we're going to see where it goes but with the investigation style of it there may not be as many videos probably won't be but I will try to put some up on any difficult concepts so that the kids will have them to refer back to if they're out sick or if they need that little refresher before they start their homework at night and I encourage when there are videos there that the students do actually watch them before they start their homework assignments because it'll refresh their minds my sixth graders this year when we film the year I'm filming the video are first and second period that's a long time between the end of second period and the get home after school eat your cookies and milk and start your homework Sorry about that interruption. Somebody knocked on my door. All right, let's get back to where we were. We talked about the videos. Next thing we need to do is talk about your assignments. You're probably going to have homework pretty much every single night of some nature unless it's stuff that we have finished in class and because of the way we're doing the sixth grade program this year a lot of it will be finished in class but parents I need you asking your child every night do you have homework great show me what you did in class today let me see it because I believe it or not I've had some students mislead their parents over the years it's my 26th year of doing this and every now and again there's a student who will mislead their parents so it's a good idea to ask your kids to show you what they've done and you may find it interesting or you may just find it confusing who knows all right 
Now for turning in the homework, we're going to be doing all that on Canvas and there's going to be one of four grades that are given. The grades they're going to get is going to be either a 10 out of 10, and to get a 10 out of 10, that means that I've looked at your homework assignment, and you show me you completed the whole thing, you demonstrated a generally good understanding of what's going on. It's not being graded necessarily for right and wrong, it's being graded for comprehension. Then we have a 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10 is you did either had an incomplete assignment, and if you leave one question unanswered, you, it's incomplete. It's 5 out of 10. Or you show me that you had a kind of understanding, but you're still missing some concepts. And then you have a 0 out of 10. 0 out of 10 means the paper was basically blank, or you didn't have a clue, or your student didn't have a clue on what they were doing. Now, those two there, the 5 out of 10 and the 0 out of 10, sound kind of rough on to parents, but I want you to understand how I grade. You see, when I give a homework assignment, say today's homework assignment, goes out today. They do it and then tomorrow we start off class giving the students a chance to ask questions. So if they didn't understand it, they can ask questions in class. I show them how to work it. They can write down those problems as I'm showing them how to work it. Turn it in to me by 3 p.m. that day and they still get that full 10 out of 10 credit for showing that they understand. There, I'll do everything I can to make my kids or help my kids be successful. Now that last little grade that we give for homework, that's going to be a 7 out of 10 and that is for late work. That means it was turned in after 3 p.m. the day, the, the next academic day after it was assigned. So if I assign it today, 3 p.m. tomorrow is a cutoff, and then you only get 7 out of 10 points. Now, there are extenuating circumstances, which I understand, and I do encourage parents and students to reach out for, to me about those. That said, having a football game at night is not an extenuating circumstance. I raised two boys. Both of them had lots of activities they did, and I would tell them to bank ahead. If you know you've got a ball game tonight, then you need to get in there the night before and get started on that assignment so you can have it turned in on time. Don't let them dig themselves into hole. Football game, basketball game, it's not an excuse for late work, except in the most extenuating of circumstances, then I can work on that. Sick? Absolutely. Had a family tragedy? Absolutely. Parent, email me, and we will take and put an extension on. Everything's good. I can totally work with you on that. But just because you have an extracurricular activity, this assignments are still due on the day that they're due. Now, let's see here. Where are we at? Let's talk about the module page. On Canvas, we have the module page, which you can see here. And now this is my module's version, which has got a lot more stuff on it than the students are going to see. But you can see how it's laid out. I'm going to start each chapter with vocabulary that the kids are going to have quizzes on later on in the module. And then we're going to have the lesson materials with everything going here. There's a lot more stuff here than the students are going to see. And then from there, down the bottom, what I really want you to see is this part here, the reviews and the assessments. You see the review, reviews, like 1.1 through 1.4 vocab quiz, matches up to an assessment. This practice quiz is identical to this real quiz, and they can take the practice quiz as many times as they want to and still get full credit. It's, 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 excuse me, well, not get full credit for it, but many times they want to to make sure they're ready for the real thing. I also do the same thing for my subtest. I mean, the subtests aren't exactly like it, but they're very similar. And I'm not sure how the subtests are going to work for the course this year. Now, the next thing we're going to be talking about is the extra credit reviews. The extra credit reviews line up with the end of chapter assessments. And the extra credit review is worth five bonus points on the chap end of chapter assessment. To get those five bonus points, they have to earn a 90% or above on the extra credit review. And that is going to, once again, they'll be allowed to take it as many times as they want to do it, but it's only going to be open for the 24 hours, midnight to midnight, the day before the test. Now, once again, extenuating circumstances. Life happens. I get that. If life happens and they can't get it done, mom, dad, grandparents, I need you to reach out to me and let me know, and then we can take and work on some extra time. Same thing goes on test. Had a bad night, dog got run over, 
something like that happen and the child is not in the best frame of mind to take that test, that's when I need either the parents, the guardians, the kids to come say, look, Ms. Reese, my dog got run over last night. I just can't take the test today. I understand. I feel it for you. I'll tell you what, you tell me when you're going to be ready for you to take the test. And right now you just go back there and study. That's going to be my attitude towards it. I want my students to be successful. And that means sometimes giving them a little bit of extra time to prepare for things. But it has to be in an extenuating type circumstance. Same thing for illnesses, extenuating circumstances. Let me know. We get an extension in there because I want them to be ready for their assessments. All right, where we got here next, grading policy, I, I've done it all. Parents, students, there goes another bell. I look forward to working with you all this year. It's going to be a great year. We're going to do some really exciting things in sixth grade accelerated math as we get you ready for that three-year program where by the end of eighth grade, you will be presumed to have completed Algebra 1 and have that knocked off your list for high school. I look forward to seeing you at the start of school. Y'all have a great day.